Hello and warm welcome to this production brought to you by Zimpapers Television Network in conjunction with our partner Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services as well as Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program. Now in today's discussion we are going to be talking about agriculture, innovation and knowledge sharing. Now joining me today are some gentlemen who are Wadilav Sansole, the Zaikis Head of Project and of course Mr. Ronald Veremu who is the extension advisor for Zakis, as well as Tok Momokuyu Agricultural Centers of Excellence Project Manager. Good morning and welcome gentlemen. Morning. morning. Mr. Sansole, can you give us a quick outline on what Zakis project is and what its main objectives are? Okay, as, as you've already detailed, Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services. So the Zakis program ha is made up of four pillars. Uh, the main, the first pillar being an enabling creation of an enabling environment. The second one is agricultural research. The third is agricultural extension and agricultural extension. So the main objective really is to help farmers or to enable farmers to contribute to green economic growth and also to stimulate rural um, agricultural economic growth. And how would you say that this this project is beneficial to Zimbabweans as a whole at this time? So as a whole, the project is seeking to strengthen and to stimulate uh, knowledge sharing and innovation services within the agricultural sector. So you will find that um, access to information on agriculture, agricultural production, agricultural research will be widely available and will be circulated uh, more, more regularly than has been the case. So there will be definitely access to information. How the the, the general public, I would say, would, would benefit at large is they will have access to, um, I think, improved agricultural methods, access to just yeah, general information around agriculture. And with a project of this extent, of yes. the size and magnitude, obviously you are not doing this alone. Would you be able to tell us who some of your partners are in this project? Okay. Uh, I represent uh, WHH or Welt Hunger Hilfe, which is the lead uh, implementation partner. Uh, within the, that uh, consortium, we've got ICRISAT, uh, which is based in Matopos, uh, which does um, the research of small grains and uh, semi-arid tropics. We also have SAT, Sustainable Agricultural Trust, um, represented here by, uh, by Tokmo. We also have uh, CTDO, or Community, De De Community Technology Development organization. Yeah. And what kind of programs have you gotten involved with with the communities in the areas that you work in? So the nature of the Zakis program uh, is solely to function with what we would call the meso level in agriculture. So the meso level is located in the, in the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. So our role is to strengthen the role of uh, agricultural research, agricultural extension and agricultural education. Then in turn, we have an incremental effect uh, going down to the community level. So you'll find that you'll have a well-rounded um, agricultural college student going into the community to either do extension, to train farmers, or a, a, a well-capacitated agricultural extension officer, and a, and a well-exposed and capacitated agricultural research um, officer. So eventually all that will touch base at the farmer level and improve the farmer's productivity. Hence, as I mentioned earlier, that the objective is to enable these farmers to contribute to green economic growth and to strengthen rural agricultural economies. Yeah. And Mr. Tok Momokuyo, you are, of course, the head of the project of um, Agricultural Centers of Excellence, which have been established at Chibero Agricultural College, as well as Matopas Research Institute. Can you tell us how and why these have been referred to as the vital hubs for meeting the Zakis objective? Um, Chibero College um, and Matobo Research Institute were selected uh, to be developed as uh, agricultural centers of excellence for a number of reasons. Um, Chibero College is, uh, represents the training component in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Matobo Research Institute uh, representing the uh, research uh, uh, component. and. Uh, like what Love has, has been saying, that we want to coordinate and uh, encourage um, coordination between the agricultural sector 
um, players. Um, would you be able to tell us more about the partners that you work with in your centers of excellence? The number of uh, players that we are working with. We're working with uh, the private sector. Uh, we're working with um, pharma representative organizations. Uh, we're working with the surrounding communities around those ACs. Uh, we're working also with the government departments, various government departments in agriculture. Okay. And Mr. Ronald Veremu, you are, of course, the extension advisor. Would you tell us more about what it is exactly that you do in the greater scope of Zakis? As the extension advisor, we are working mainly with uh, Agritex and Vet Department, which are the two main extension arms of the Ministry of Agriculture. So as Zakis, what we have found out is um, there is a lot of capacity gaps in terms of uh, how these people do their day-to-day -day work. So what we did initially was to do an extension needs assessment where we moved around in the districts we are working in to try and find out the gaps that are these extension personnel have in terms of uh, either technical or maybe other things that they need to, to use in their work. So we did that and we had a list of uh, competencies that we felt that uh, need to be enhanced. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing following those competencies, we are doing mainly training where we are actually looking for specialists in a subject to go and train those people, such as the extension workers, so that when they are trained, they are better positioned to go in the wilds, in the districts, and uh, take that same information and assist farmers to improve at least uh, three things. One is productivity, two is production, and the third is their income at a uh, household level. So what we are doing besides the trainings, we are also taking them to do some site visits, to go to areas where agriculture is being practiced in an excellent way. So we take them maybe to the likes of art farm, we take them to even the ACs and the DACs where there is an improved way of doing agriculture. So they go there, they get the exposure. After they get the exposure, they also go back to the farmers and cascade the same information to the farmers. So ideally, the extension program is primarily a program that is meant for capacity building, as it were, really. For do you only work with small scale farmers or are you also looking at bigger productions as well? We are looking at the greater extent of agriculture mm -hmm. from communal to the large commercial farms. Mm -hmm. Because our existing staff also are covering all the, 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 the sectors of production. So what we do is um, we take them and, f for example, to, to see where production is done in a good way. And as a feedback mechanism from them, they also tell us what um, are the most important uh, factors or critical aspects they want to be discussed within their scope of, of, of work. So it can be tailor-made to suit certain people. For example, if you look at uh, people in the commercial areas, they may not need the same type of uh, innovations that are applicable in the communal areas. So we tailor-make uh, those trainings, we tailor-make those uh, visits, we tailor-make even the innovations to, to cater for all, all types of, uh, of sectors and production levels. And of course, there must be some level of impact of these capacity building programs within the delivery of the extension services. Would you be able to elaborate a bit more on that for us? The overall impact is um, generally to improve uh, our national food, food, secu food security, mm -hmm. starting at our household level and eventually at national level. So the impact that we are looking at is um, for our farmers to adapt new technologies and also new ways of, uh, of, of production and in some events actually adopting new, new crops or new uh, uh, livestock um, uh, species that they can produce in their areas. One, to meet the household food security. Two, to produce excess for the market. So we are also looking at uh, a great extent uh, market-led agriculture or market-led production mm -hmm. so that we slowly move away from subsistence type of farming but also look at uh, farming as a business where our farmers can actually get, make a living and also invest in other, other business ventures coming out of agriculture. With such, Mr. Wadilab, with such long-term um, projections, really, of your intentions, what would you say is the greater scope between now and, say, 2030 for Zakis? Okay. Um, 
What is important to understand is that for any strong agro-based economy, the major currency is information. Mm -hmm. So information has to flow, information has to be easily accessed, and then information has to be easily translatable to practical actions. So one of the, the, the core, at the core of the, the, the Zakis program is that we are ensuring that we are, we are farmer-led, we are market-oriented, and ensuring that we are addressing the current uh, needs of the farming sector or the agricultural sector across all the farming clusters, as Ronald has mentioned. So the long-term effect of it all is that with a strengthened knowledge and innovation services ecosystem in the mm -hmm. country, it will, be, it will be fairly easy to, to, to have information coming from research being translated into, into education packages that can be trained to either its uh, agricultural professionals, extension workers, then also disseminated through the extension system all the way down to the farmer level. Like I said, across all those farming clusters, A1, A2, communal, small-scale, commercial, commercial. So there, there will be uh, a, a knowledge and innovation ecosystem that will cater for all these um, for, for all these facets, so by 2030, you will you will be seeing an an, an effect an effectively functioning uh, knowledge like almost like a knowledge economy around the agricultural sector. So that way, you now have uh, whatever is happening in research can easily be translated to productivity within the private sector. Mm -hmm. Whatever is happening in the private sector can also be easily linked to what the smallholder farmers are doing or whichever uh, farming level is doing. So a strengthened knowledge and innovation ecosystem is what will carry the day for a strong agroeconomy. Agro and for looking at 2030, that's where we are heading. And how sustainable is the program as it is right now? Okay. So sus the, the sustainability aspect of the program is, I think, one of the one of the silver bullets to our sustainability is our, f our, our, we are embedded within the government. So mm -hmm. the activities we are doing, we don't necessarily, because as a consortium or as a project, we are there for a, a temporary period. We are just there to stimulate, uh, to capacitate, to facilitate. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's the government departments that are going to carry, uh, carry on with all the activities and the initiatives we started. So by embedding the project within the, the, the main departments of the, gov of the Ministry of Agriculture, the, the, uh, that already builds in the sustainability aspect of it. To top it up, there is the private sector partnerships that then come in, because without the private sector, um, it doesn't really matter what, what you do, because they are the access to the market. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the farmer has to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with those partnerships also coming in, a, a blend between the, the role of government and the role of private sector being brought together on the platform that the platforms we are creating is is the recipe for sustainability for for the project okay thank you very much now of course you're watching a discussion on agriculture innovation and sustainable and knowledge sharing brought to you by Zimpapers television network in conjunction with our friends from Zaki's please do stay with us if you have any comments or views on our show today please be sure to contact us on our Facebook page Zimpapers TV network or via our Twitter handle at ZTN news stay with us And welcome back, and thank you for tuning in. You're joining us here at Zimpapers Television Network in conjunction with our partners from Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services, as well as the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program. Now, before the break, I was joined by these gentlemen here, Wadilav Sansole, who is the Zaki's Head of Project, as well as Ronald Veremo, who is the Zaki's Extension Advisor, and Mr. Tokmo Mukuyu, who is the Agricultural Centers of Excellence Project Manager. Now, Mr. Sansole, before the break, you were telling us briefly about Zaki's as well as your objectives between now and 2030. What projects has Zeki started in line with, of course, Chibiru College and how are they performing? Okay, so Chibiru, as Tokmo mentioned, Chibiru was selected to be an agricultural center of excellence. So one of the, at the core of that, 
Um, maybe if I take a step back, what preceded it all was what we call the farmer needs assessment, um, which was done to identify what are the needs across all the farming clusters. So once we got to the point where we understood what it is that the farmers are saying, no, this is what we'd like to see in a research center, this is what we'd like to see in a center of excellence, we then began the process now of, of um, crafting the various programs that relate to what the farmers are demanding. But at the same time, Chibero is a college of agriculture. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that we did, we had to make sure that we are not uh, pushing Chibero to deviate from its core mandate of training students uh, and producing well-rounded agricultural students. So some of the projects uh, or some of the activities that are at the Center of Excellence to date, I, I believe Tokmo will talk a bit more on that. We have um, refurbished quite a number of uh, equipment at Chibero College. We have installed um, solar systems to power uh, the, ad the admin blocks and various other uh, centers. We've, uh, we've put in um, reliable water supply. Mm -hmm. and, and with all this, you then have um, the various projects that are happening is um, the aquaculture or what we'd call the fish farming, which is something that we we'll, would we'll probably uh, go into depth at a later stage. There's the poultry project, there's uh, pen fattening, um, there's, there's also horticulture production, there's also facilities for varietal or variety demonstrations and testing of various products from the private sector. So uh, you will find at, at the center you will have several variety demonstrations taking place, uh, different companies showcasing their products, also companies coming to test their feeds on poultry, livestock and all those things. So though that infrastructure is what is enabling Chibero now to then engage in some of these projects, um, uh, whether it's commercial production of poultry, to support their students, to support the training of their students, whether it's commercial production of, of, of in aquaculture, to also improve on their, uh, the, the, the nutrition of the students at the college. So the refurbished infrastructure, rehabilitated equipment, and also the new equipment purchased and installed is what will, is enabling and giving Ichibero the capacity to run these uh, series of projects. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tokmomkwe, you are, of course, the project manager at these agricultural centers of excellence. Would, can you highlight some of the work that's being done at these ACE centers? Um, the work that has been done at the two centers, uh, like what Love has mentioned, includes uh, refurbishment of equipment, uh, which was almost obsolete in some cases, and also purchasing uh, new equipment, uh, putting in infrastructure that will enable the institutions to conduct their mandate. Um, Chibero College, uh, a lot of work has been done on the uh, infrastructure for pen fattening, uh, for aquaculture, and these things are part of uh, the things that the students use or the lecturers use for training the students. And also at uh, Matobo Research Institute, uh, the laboratory has been uh, uh, renovated, which enables uh, the researchers there to, do the, to conduct their work. And <coughs> I think the most important thing is that all these things are being done to create an, 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 an enabling environment for uh, both institutions to conduct their mandate. Um, work has been done to put more water uh, through drilling of boreholes. There's been work that has been done to uh, put drip irrigation for both institutions. Uh, work has been done to facilitate private sector to come in and invest. Uh, like what I've mentioned, aquaculture, we've got fish feeds coming in, we've got uh, seed houses coming in to do demonstration plots uh, and uh, showcase the varieties uh, that they are producing uh, for, the, for the country. Now, of course, with Chibero and the Matopo Research Institute, those are institutes that have become your centers of excellence. But your programs are targeted also, like you said, small-scale um, communal farmers. How would you say which 
areas have you targeted and how have the farmers in those areas benefited from programs like Zakis? Okay, so through, through Zakis, uh, apart from the agri centers of excellence, the two of them, Matopos and, uh, and Shibero, we have uh, what we call district agri centers of excellence, which are based in districts we are working in. We have one in Chegutu, one in Mondorongezi, another one in Matopos, then the other one in, uh, in Incisa districts. So the sole mandate of, of these centers of excellence is to, they are at least closer to the farmers, and most of them are in the communal areas. Mm -hmm. So their role is, um, we would have um, demonstrations there for, for, for crop and livestock where farmers can come in and learn and also adapt some of the innovations happening there and also practice them at their, at their farms. And uh, what we're also doing is to, to make these centers like training centers where the farmers can come in and uh, get some training in whatever field they want to, to learn, then they go and practice. Then besides those as district centers, we have what we also call agri um, what we call district wide information centers, which will be based in districts. So the sole mandate of this uh, is to bring information closer to the farmers. So there will be connectivity there, there will be Wi-Fi there, there will be a television set where some, some videos on production will be shown. Farmers can come there, they can connect on Wi-Fi, they download any documents or any videos which are agriculture related. And they can also bring their issues to the wide information centers and the extension worker, they can actually try to, 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 to address the issues. Or if he can't, he can maybe escalate them to the district center or eventually the, 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 the agriculture centers. So we are trying to, to, to bring information closer to the farmers and also to get uh, their issues addressed at local level. So mm -hmm. that's um, how we are trying to address uh, the issues to do with the communal farmers. In okay. our areas. And obviously with the lockdown this year, a lot of people did turn to market gardening as a means of sustaining themselves and their mm. families. Mm. And I think quite a few people have realized the potential mm. for them to be big earners in agriculture. Mm. And maybe they don't know of such a program as Zakis. Mm. How do programs like Zakis benefit people who are for lack of a better term, mm. market gardeners, mm. or just starting out perhaps with a poultry project yeah. and would like to see it grow into something more. How do they benefit from this? Okay. Firstly, they will benefit through training. Mm -hmm. We will train the extension workers. I think we, we did um, an online training for the extension workers in the areas that we were operating in. So we, with the thinking that they will go and uh, actually train the farmers in proper broiler production. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after that, we, we have uh, trained our, our extension workers in terms of um, market-led production, where they also go to farmers and actually teach them how to, to start a business and uh, how to do a, a market scan. And I think the problem with our farmers, mainly they just go into production without having a, a, a good market. So we're trying, teaching them that you need to look for a market first, secure your market, then you go into production. And also through one of our, um, our online applications, we have, which is called Kurimamari, Mm -hmm. It's a mobile application where one can actually link with the market. So a farmer can log into there, put his produce there, even the prices. Are these yeah. only limited to local markets or is there uh, the prospect for someone, for instance, who decides to break out into horticulture as mm. an option, mm. do they have the same access mm. to benefits of Zakis in this end for mm. imports? So what, what we and have... For, sorry, to export, export yeah. yes. So what we have done, I think, some three months ago, three, four months ago, we had a workshop on, um, on, 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 on exports where we called uh, some of the existing workers from the districts to come and actually learn what, what is required for, for a farmer to actually be certified to, to export. So, so it's called Global Gap Certification. Mm -hmm. So they now know, it's existing workers, what's needed. So now they're in the process of actually cascading the information down to the farmers. So I think in a way we are trying to, to broaden the market, uh, the market for our farmers. Yes, we have a local market, but also we need to exp export to the global market. So yes, we are trying to also to open up for, for them through through Sarkis, yes. And of course, with a program as big as this one, you mentioned before, you have the Matopos Research Institute and Chibeta College. Is there a possibility of spreading this to more grassroots levels 
in terms of schools because schools now teach agriculture as a class. Are we also going to see the curriculum involving more on in being including more innovation and knowledge sharing from a grassroots level? So in the four pillars I mentioned, um, creation of enabling environment where these agricultural centers of excellence sit, agricultural strengthening of agricultural research, um, agricultural in of, um, education and agricultural extension. So one of the activities or one of the key activities we're doing at Zakis is embarking on what we're calling a curriculum review process. Mm -hmm. So this curriculum review process is um, going to strengthen uh, the existing agricultural curriculum we have. Because one thing to note is that uh, regionally benchmarked, our curriculum is quite strong. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge has always been the execution of the curriculum. Okay. So now once, once that has been resolved, uh, a lot of the, the information that is going into the curriculum review will also then be cascaded down further into, um, into the lower levels. So from the agricultural college, there will now be access to some of that information to whether it's the secondary schools, primary schools. And then also one of the things that has happened is with the word information centers Ronald has spoken about, um, in Chegutu, I think one of them will be located in a school. Mm -hmm. So they will be able to, to actually um, interact with a lot of agricultural information and all the things that are happening within the agricultural centers of excellence and within the Zakis program. So it's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic that you ask because once you, once you now go the, the, the curriculum route, it brings in a whole range of other factors. Mm -hmm. But our role really is to focus on strengthening the existing agricultural curriculum. Then once that is strong, uh, uh, I guess pages from that can be pulled out and taken down to, to even the lower levels. So you'll find even possibly, th uh, the ambition is possibly at even as, as, as far as teacher training mm -hmm. will also start being able to feed into, um, the, the, the core Ministry of Agriculture will also be able to feed into uh, teacher training of um, agricultural teachers who then in turn cascade it down to um, to the secondary and the primary schools. So that is the long-term goal at the end of it all, that it should get down there. But at the core of it, uh, primarily at the moment, is to strengthen the existing curriculum across all the agricultural colleges in the country. And speaking of curriculum at agricultural colleges, would you say with the new innovations that you've introduced, with the changes you've introduced, would you say you've gotten a higher response for candidates who want to come and study agriculture at these colleges? It's, it's a bit early to tell mm -hmm. um, because, uh, I mean, the, the simple thing is that the, 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 the college enrollment is fixed. Mm -hmm. So if the college takes in 150 students, that's it. It can't really take in more than that. But what has happened now, which is also probably what led us to an institution like ZTN, mm -hmm. is that because of the interactions and, the, and the, the, the projects and the demonstration of the work we are doing via social media, mm -hmm more interest is coming in from the general public who want to understand more about agriculture of or course. about a certain value chain or a certain activity. So now we then decided, okay, not everyone can go through the four walls of a formal institution, but in this modern day, uh, there is various aspects for dissemination as well. So one of the things that these institutions will also start doing in the long term is offering the short courses as well in, in specific, whether it's apiculture, whether it's aquaculture, there'll be very short-term courses uh, where people can be certified um, to produce and also they will, they will be part of a network of uh, like-minded people and they'll be able to, to get more ideas as they go. So it opens up agricultural training to a wider uh, spectrum mm -hmm. and not just confining it to agricultural professionals and students. So that is the, that is the avenue or the way we, we, that is the way we are hoping that it will also disseminate. So post our engagement and uh, possibly going to the public like this, we are hoping for more interaction now from the public for, and demanding specific trainings on specific value chains and specific uh, production entities. Okay. I, th I think also in addition to that, um, we find that the project is e establishing training facilities it's the DACES and um, the ACES specifically for conducting training targeted people that are already in practice uh, in farming um, 
so that you don't interfere with the normal training like at Ibero for students. But you can bring in farmers, you can bring in students, you can uh, from schools who mm -hmm. want to do short courses okay. on particular value chains um, so that they are trained and then go back with better information and uh, better methods of production. Okay, sorry to interrupt you there, but we have to quickly go to break, but stay with us here at ZTN. We'll be back more shortly. Welcome back. You're joining us here at, Z at ZTN and joining us today for a discussion on agriculture innovation and knowledge sharing. Our men from Zakis, which is a project meant to enlighten and inform on agricultural um, value chains and how they can work for you. Now, before we went to break, uh, Mr. Wadilav, you mentioned that this Zakis basically is a meeting of like-minded people to encourage involvement and knowledge sharing in agriculture. Would you say there has been an inclusion of women farmers in a program such as Zakis? And are you promoting equality? Because for the longest time, farming in particular has always been viewed as men's work. All right. Um, interestingly, like I said, we already work with, with government institutions mm -hmm. that already have their, uh, what you call their gender quotas or their mandates to promote participation um, of women. So for example, at Ibero College, it's a f they have a 50-50 rule. Although um, I think interestingly we are, we are seeing, we are hearing feedback also from um, stakeholders, for example, in the extension services where they are saying they are getting more women coming into extension services because uh, now it's no longer just a 50-50 at the mm -hmm. college. Sometimes you will actually even have a 60-40, uh, more women than, um, than male uh, students enrolling there. Mm -hmm. So on that aspect of things, I, I, I believe we, the, the, there is adequate promotion of uh, women participation at the extension level. Um, at the research level, it's a similar uh, scenario, and a majority of the teams we are working with uh, at the research center are led uh, by, the, by the women research officers. Um, they are the ones pretty much taking the lead in everything, coordinating all the activities, um, at, for example, at Matopo's research. Uh, within the, 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 the other district centers of excellence that Ronald mentioned, I think two of our districts are actually uh, districts that are led by uh, women district agricultural extension officers and then at the farmer level the the anticipation is that with the the promotion of um, service providers uh, or what we would call more women taking up the role in, in service provision in agriculture mm -hmm. it makes it it, it makes it, it, it translates into, we're hoping it also translates into more women at the farming level being able to, to see that, oh, okay, this is possible, this can be done. Um, we have all the companies that we work with um, also have their own internal policies and mandates, and we also try and make sure that they are uh, taking care and catering for, for more and promoting mm -hmm. the, the participation of more, of more women farmers. Also, you see that some of the, the, the value chains that uh, are, are promoted or some of the value chains that came out of the farmer needs assessment are what would be called women-friendly value chains. Um, and you'd find that you, by default, you'll find a lot more participation of, of women in, 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 such, in such value chains. So for, for me to say, um, Zaki says literally gone out there and picked <laughs> women to say come work, no. Mm. What we've done is, in creation of an, it is to continue to push for the creation of an enabling environment mm. for more women farmers to participate, more women extension officers to take the lead, more women research officers. And also at the, the college, you also have more women lecturers also taking the lead in, some, in, in, in a lot of the initiatives that we're doing. And of course, I am pretty certain now that you're garnering more interest from the public, as mentioned, if you've got programs that you intend to put out there, 
for small scale productions like in our backyards with our fowls and market gardening, I'm pretty confident you'll have a lot more <laughs> women yeah. signing up <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, you mentioned earlier that you work closely with the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Viremu. Uh, Zakis has developed an e-strategy, e-extension strategy to this end. Can you highlight for us very quickly how this will benefit agritechs and the farmers? Okay, thank you for that. So for our e-extension strategy, we are using five pillars that I will be using in our extension. The first one is SMS extension. The second one we are using digital applications, which is our Kurimamari and our um, AgriShare. Then we're also using um, what we call um, an in-service training application where the government guys can go online and, and, and do some courses there. Then we're also using um, social media, mainly WhatsApp, where we guys are, are creating groups with farmers and posting extension messages to the farmers maybe on a weekly basis or something like that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, these are the, th the, 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 the pillars we are using. So what we have done is, um, and now because of COVID, the gathering of people is, is no longer permitted. So we're trying to reach our farmers digitally. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we are in the process of actually equipping our extension workers with uh, digital tools. We have started distributing some tablets and, uh, and some ATEM for, for, for data so that at least they are better able to, to, to communicate with the farmers. Then through our Kurimamari application, it is, uh, I think, almost every value chain in Zimbabwe from livestock and, uh, and crops where there are some guidelines in terms of nodes and uh, extension advice from for all, all, all the, the value chains. So an extension worker in the, in the wards can actually refer to that extension uh, app and actually quickly find if there's a problem in farmers and refer to that and go and solve the farmers' problems. So in terms of this application, it's not only for the farmers. Even mm -hmm. the extension workers can also use it. So it's uh, for both farmers and extension workers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what would you say um, Agritex, Agritex has done to pass on the capacity building made under the Zakis partnership countrywide? Mm. So wha what they have done is um, they already have some training programs for their farmers at, mm -hmm. at, at what level. So what we are doing is just coming to, to capacitate them and also to give them up-to-date information in terms of uh, the value chains they will be training the farmers. So we are also trying to make them um, structure these trainings in a, in a good way and also to do record keeping, which is quite, quite, quite good for them to actually refer back to, to the farmers. So in a way, we are actually encouraging them to have more trainings, more structured uh, record keeping for the trainings that they have done and a feedback mechanism between them and the farmers. Where the farmers have something to ask, they can actually go to the extension workers and actually get some, some answers. In the event where the extension worker is not actually conversing with that field, we have created a platform where you can actually refer to those people who have uh, better information, like the private sector, or maybe the people at district level, or even at national level, or even through the ACES and the, the DACES. So we have created that, uh, that network of, of knowledge sharing so that at least uh, the extension worker is actually well equipped to service the farmer for, for better production and productivity. Okay, yeah. Mr. Tokmo, with such a massive network for knowledge sharing, what are your good agricultural practices that you are instilling into the farmers on the different levels of farming? And what structures do you have in place to facilitate your goal of achieving these good agricultural practices in your agricultural centers? Well, when you're talking about uh, good agricultural practices, you're looking at um, innovations or technologies that are resource efficient, um, giving uh, maximum output out of those resources that are applied, and also taking care of uh, the environment. Um, so what the project is doing is to promote even, we include the uh, technology that is being pushed by government uh, at the moment from Vudza, um, we trying to have technologies in crops, in livestock, that will make sure that uh, farmers get the best out of the inputs that they use and also be able to manage the environment, the, 
the environment so that uh, we do not uh, have a reduction of uh, output from uh, practices that the farmers will be doing in the fields or uh, in, in producing their livestock. So what the project has done or is doing in making sure that the good agricultural practices are uh, relayed to the farmers uh, is that we're working with Agritex um, through the trainings that Ronald is uh, referring to so that they take these uh, and relate to, farm relate to farmers through the demonstration plots that have been established at the uh, ACES and at the DACES. So the DACES will showcase uh, good agro agricultural practices for farmers to adopt and then uh, do them in their own fields so that um, production increases and also uh, people realize uh, food security and probably also improve uh, the local economies of the areas that we operate in. Now, of course... If, we, if I can add to what Tokmo has said about um, good agricultural practices, also uh, a couple of months ago, the Permanent Secretary, Dr. John Vasera, uh, presented his um, agricultural st uh, turnaround strategy. And one of the things that he spoke about was what he called a blitz soil testing uh, program. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that uh, we've also done, um, and also in alignment with that, with that uh, uh, transformation strategy, is we've partnered with uh, um, Solidaridad Southern Africa to uh, pilot the testing uh, or the use of soil scanners uh, or soil testing devices. So what we'll just uh, what that does is it also helps farmers to get some instant information on the condition of their soil. But nonetheless, before that is um, wholesale rolled out into the country, we have to run a couple of tests mm -hmm. um, and also compare it with uh, existing laboratory facilities and see how, how far or if this is a, a technology that can help in also uh, promoting the, the blitz soil testing um, program that the permanent secretary spoke about. Okay. Now, of course, we all know agriculture is life, the backbone of the economy in uh, not just Zimbabwe, but the world over. Now, what is Zakis doing to contribute to our economic recovery, considering how big a role agriculture plays in resuscitating an economy? Okay, so I think um, looking into the, the, the recent activities that have happened, um, the ministry has launched a livestock development program. They've launched a horticulture uh, strategy document. They've also launched an agricultural transformation strategy. And then uh, on top of, uh, to, to, to support these, there's also what is called the National Agricultural Policy Framework which is the development of a, of, a, of a policy framework that will support agriculture. Now, Zakis is in the middle of all these things. Um, mm -hmm. We are uh, in alignment and playing a facilitatory role to enable our government colleagues to, to, to conduct and to also strengthen the, the role that they are playing. So, for example, um, the, the, the development of an agriculture extension and research policy uh, the you know the the centers of excellence will be able to to demonstrate best practice. That is what is needed for us to be able to to contribute to a stronger horticultural sector, mm -hmm. to contribute to a stronger livestock sector. So, the role that Zakis is really playing now is then to strengthen the institution that should become the driving force of a strong agricultural economy. And as I mentioned earlier, that the, the, at the core or the, the, the backbone of any strong agro-based economy, is, is the currency is information mm -hmm. and knowledge and innovation. So once you strengthen the, 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 the competent authority to carry out this mandate effectively, they will, I mean, at the end of the day, you will be able to see strong agricultural programs at the smallholder level, strong um, support at the, the, the commercial level, and also a much more consistent and um, what I would say an enabling policy environment within the agricultural sector. So in all this, um, Zakis has his tentacles spread out across mm -hmm. all these, these facets and uh, making contributions and supporting 
um, in all, in, and facilitating, whether it's dialogues, whether it's um, uh, supporting the various ministry teams to conduct uh, research, to, to be able to come up with uh, policy or strategic documents, all that. That is um, a lot of the work that uh, Zakis is then also doing in, in, in the background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. And that was and that was the panel that I had with me today discussing agriculture, innovation, and knowledge sharing from the Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and, Inform and Innovation Services. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. If you have any comments or questions or would like to know more about Zakis and all the programs that they have as at their ACEs, please, please follow us on Facebook and on Twitter as well as for at ZT, at ZTN TV Network, uh, at Zim Papers TV Network, and at ZTN News on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.